In this video, I'm going to go over how to use Raycast to do a simple mouse over, and then I'll cover a couple of other things you can do with this exact same functionality uh, as it is. It, that way you can kind of expand and elaborate on how, how this core functionality works with a lot of different things. So if we take a look over here, if I have these six items and I mouse over them, what's happening is that they are disappearing and then they reappear. And to do this, what we're doing is we're just coming in and we're going to grab the screen position. So we have our mouse pointer position and then we're grabbing that off the screen here. Okay, and this is an arbitrary space that it's going to pick up the X, Y only. So it's very important that you actually convert this to a world point. To do the world point, the first thing we have to do is we have to match our camera, the elevation of our camera, we have to match that to our camera itself. So I'm doing adding 10 to my Z value to make sure my camera that has a value of negative 10 matches between the two. If you don't, your, your positions in the world will be way off. So it's important that you match those every time you have to use this option. After that, what we do is we grab the screen to world point. Now this is going to convert those X, Y, see 4,000, whatever, to down to negative 5, 10. So you see there's a big difference between those numbers. And it's important that you convert those over to do your raycast or, is you, or you'll be raycasting into nowhere. Now we move on to the raycast itself. The raycast origin is going to be the mouse position converted to world point. The direction is just going to be straight down. I'm not doing any type of uh, looking left, right, up, down, none of that. And then I'm doing a distance of one along with a layer mask of hover over. So each one of these game objects has a hover over mask on it. So that th those are the only ones that will show up when this raycast is cast. From there we go on to the to the null check and I what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that I am only getting the ones that actually have a check because otherwise it's constantly sending null and I don't want to send null. There's no reason to do that. So we're going to get a null check to make sure that we're always going to hit something. So when we mouse over it, you see how it quickly blinks there. That null becomes the object for that split second. Comes down here if we're not null, and then we add the item to the list. So it's a list right down here that we have comes up, and this is the, the list we're adding it to. And now that we add these items to the list, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set them as inactive. Okay, we don't need them to be active because now that we have our mouse here, we're just going to go ahead and inactivate and activate and activate and then we just mouse over them and it's going to inactivate them and it's going to add them to that list and now the second part where they're coming back is here and this is where I'm actually reactivating them so we have the list of game objects and the first thing I'm going to do up here is I want this part to run only if my list actually has something in it so if the count is not equal to zero then we're going to run down through the process and this process, what I'm doing is I've got a cooldown here that says, okay, every two seconds, bring the last item back to life. Because we're going to come in here, we're going to say, all right, we're going to mouse over, and two seconds later, it's going to pop back up. And we're going to mouse over, and it's going to come back up. And we're just going to keep doing that over and over. So every two seconds, it's going to keep sending, and another one will pop back up. Now, we set active, and then we remove it from the list. Okay, so this list here comes back down here, and then it will do the check again to make sure that it's in my list, so I can add it again because it does not contain it in the list. Now, this is the general concept of how this works. Okay, we have a list of items that we want to create a list, and we're just going to enable, disable, do whatever you want to them. So let me give you an example of what you can do with this beyond just enabling and disabling. You want to do basic stuff like, let's say we want to have a player. I have a little player guy here. Let's turn him on. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we have this little player here. Okay. He's a little clickable player. 
If I click down here, I can move him anywhere on the screen. Let's let those come back real quick and then we can do, all right, you see he has no interaction whatsoever with the objects. Only the mouse cursor does. So if we come in here and I say, all right, I want my player now to be the object that interacts with those. So we're going to do game object find. We're going to find and we're going to, we're going to find player. And then we want to get the player's position. Okay. So we're going to get that player position and now we're going to replace the origin on that raycast instead of doing a world screen position you see now my mouse no longer interacts with it but my player we are using his position as that raycast so now if i click you see the player now is the interacting agent with that so that is a simple way of taking this basic uh, flow that can be used for just about anything and applying it to multiple things. So let's do one more thing. And in this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to have these follow the player instead of destroying when we walk through them like Pac-Man. So to do that, what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna turn off the set active to no. We don't need them to be destroyed. And we also don't need them to come back to life. So we're not, just, we're not gonna remove them and inactivate them so we don't have to have them come back on. Now the first step to this is we're going to take this list of objects, okay? We're going to copy paste that list of game objects. We're going to do a for each on this. We need to get each one of these game objects and we're going to connect an update to it, okay? Now what we're going to do with these game objects is we want to move toward. So let's do a get position on each one of these because these are the positions of the game objects themselves. So anything that's in that list, I want to get that position. And now I want to move toward. So we can do a vector two, move toward. Now we are wanting the these objects to move towards the player. So these are the current, this is the current position for that. And now we're going to do a find game object again. And then we're going to do the player. Okay, and we're going to get position for that as well. Okay, so what we have now is we are calculating the move towards. Now we need to add a time delta time on here. That will make our movement nice and smooth. And then we're going to add a set position. Okay, so here's the position that we're going to be using. This is what they will be following. And now we are going to, which object do we want to move? We're going to set this to the objects that we're going to move. So these are the objects being set. Now, if I come through here and I touch one of these, you see all of them will start following as soon as I touch them. So that's just another way of using this exact same core functionality with the Raycast to trigger something to do something and put it in this list. These lists are very helpful um, for creating scenarios where you can inactivate, you know, help things move, do whatever you want them to do. It's really quite straightforward and simple. And once you really get the hang that these core processes are typically at the root of whatever you're doing. So that's all there is for this one. Uh, let me know what you think, and I appreciate your time. Thanks.